Today we're going to talk about compound interest. Compound interest occurs when interest on an investment is reinvested in the account and thereby creates a new larger investment that will earn even more interest. In this scenario, you earn interest on both the initial amount you invested and any earned interest. Take example one. James invests $8,000 at 10% interest for two years. If interest is compounded annually, how much will be in the account at the end of the two-year period? So in year one, we have the $8,000 that James started with plus 10% of the $8,000. This gives us $8,000 plus $800. So at the end of year one, there's a balance of $8,800. In year two, we have the $8,800 that we started with plus 10% of that amount. So now we have $8,800 plus $880, which is a total of $9,680. This means James earned the difference between $9,680 and the $8,000 he invested, which is $1,680. Let's look at the difference between compound interest and simple interest. So we just found that two years at 10% interest compounded annually gave James $9,680. If we were to compute simple interest instead, we would have A equals P times 1 plus RT. So our amount would be the 8,000 times 1 plus 10% for two years. This is a total of $9,600, which is a difference of $80. Um, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, and he who doesn't pays it. Um, a quote by Albert Einstein just to show you how important compound interest is and how much people value it. So let's look at a formula to make this easier so that we don't have to do a calculation for every year. We could do something for the totality of the time that we invest something. So here's the formula we'll use for this chapter, or this section. We have A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. So just like before, A is the future amount, P is the present amount we invest, R is the interest rate that we're still going to write as a decimal, and T will be the time, and we always write time in years. The new thing here is n. n is the number of compoundings per year. So in the last example, we just did annually, but I'm going to show you other examples where the compoundings are more frequent. So let's talk a little bit more about compoundings per year. n is the number of compoundings per year. This means the bank pays interest n times a year. Some common compounding periods, so we already talked about annually, which would be one time a year. Semi-annual would be twice a year. Quarterly will be four times a year, monthly will be 12 times a year, weekly is 52 times a year. Daily, still gonna be confusing. It's either 365 or 360. You really have to watch the wording of the problem. When I want it to be 360, when the homework wants it to be 360, it will tell you, otherwise use 365. And so example two, how much money will you have in three years if you invest $5,000 at 6.5% interest compounded quarterly? So let's pull out our pieces of the formula. We can start with P is 5,000. That's how much we're going to invest. 6.5%, I just want to write as a decimal, so that's 0 0.065. Um, quarterly means it's for four times a year, and then my time is three years. So let's bring back our formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And let's plug our pieces into that formula. So you can see here I have A is 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 to the 4 times 3. How you put this in your calculator is really dependent on your calculator. I find it's most of the time really helpful to do this one simple step of 4 times 3 is 12 before you try to use your calculator to do the whole amount. You should be able to plug it in just like it looks right here, 5,000. Make sure you use the parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4. Make sure you close the parenthesis and then use the exponent button with 12, this should arrive at $6,067.04. It's super important that as you're watching a video that you're trying this with your calculator. You need to see what buttons you're supposed to push, what order you're supposed to push them in, um, and the more times you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. But most of the time, the problem with these examples that I give you 
or the homework you're doing. The issue you have is how to put them in your calculator, so make sure you take the time to try them um, before you go over to the homework and get stuck. At least with the examples, you know what the answer should be. For the homework, you have no idea what's supposed to happen. Um, one more note, just in case I were to ask you, hey, how much interest did you earn? You always subtract the total amount you had, $6,067.04 from the amount you invested, 5,000, which means there's $1,067.04 in interest. All right, so let's just switch it up a little. Let's say um, this time Kara invests 32,000 in an account earning 2% interest compounded weekly. How much money will be in the account at the end of four years? So just like before, I'm gonna start by saying um, my P is 32,000, my R is 0 0.02. This time weekly compounding means in in is 52 and our time is 4. Once again I plug this into my formula so you can see I have 32,000 I have 1 plus 0 0.02 over 52 and then 52 times 4 so just like in the last problem before I grab my calculator I'm going to do 52 times 4 is 208 of course you could start by putting 52 times 4 is 208 in your calculator so you write it down then I can put all of this into my calculator, making sure I use parentheses to arrive at $34,664.65. Again, I want you to be doing these examples. I want you to be stopping the video so you can try these and put them in your calculator. Um, the formulas you're always going to have, you don't have to memorize them. The biggest problem with, these, with this whole chapter is just making sure you can put it in the calculator correctly. All right. And just one more time that I noted, he, hey, here's how much interest she made. So she ended up with $34,664.65. She invested $32,000, which means she um, gained $2,664.65 in interest. All right, <clears throat> this one, I'm just going to go a little backwards. So this time, instead of telling you how much money you're putting in, I'm going to have you figure out how much money you need to invest. So we're saying how much money should be invested in an account earning 3.75% interest compounded monthly in order to have $25,000 in six years. So this time, I don't know what P is, but I know the amount I want in the future is 25,000. I know the interest rate is 0 0.0375. Compounded monthly means N is 12 and the time is six. All of that goes into our formula, but you can see this time what's missing is P. So just like I've done in all the other problems, I'm going to start with 12 times 6 is 72. To get P, I'm going to want to divide 25,000 by this whole amount that's in the parentheses. Um, I try not to do any estimations or any rounding until the very end. So you can see I'm going to put this whole thing into my calculator. So I'll have 25,000 divided by parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0375 over 12 close parentheses to the 72. If you put this in your calculator before and you rounded it all, it's going to make it so much worse when you raise it to a power, round that again, and then divide. So the best thing to do is round at the very end and keep all the values um, as you go in your calculation. So this told me I would need to invest $19,969.91 in order to have $25,000 um, in six years. So example five, say you deposit 7,000 in an account paying 4.2% interest compounded semi-annually. After two years, the interest rate is increased to 4.5% compounded monthly. What will be the value of the account after five years? So this problem is much different because it wasn't the same amount of interest and the same amount of compounding over the entire amount of the investment. So we're gonna need to do this in multiple steps. Part one, we need to figure out what's happening at 4.2% semi-annually. And then part two, we need to figure out what will happen at 4.5% compounded monthly. So for part one, we started with $7,000. The rate of interest was 4.2%. This lasts for um, two years, and the compounding was um, semi-annually, which it means N is two. So I put these pieces into our formula. I have 7,000 times 1 plus 0 0.042 over 2 to the 2 times 2. At least this is an easy exponent, it's 4. I can plug this in my calculator and it says at the end of two years I have $7,606.78. This amount is very important because it's the starting part for our next piece. 
So in our next piece, our A is 7,000, or sorry, our P is $7,606.78. So we don't go back to the 7,000, we go to where were we in two years. But our interest rate changed to 4.5%, our compounding changed to 12, and there are three years left of this investment. So I put these pieces into our formula. Up here, 12 times 3, you can see I made that 36. So this is what I want to put in my calculator. And again, I encourage you, go ahead and try it. Make sure you're also getting $8,704.04 as your total. As we continue to talk about compound interest, we want to introduce effective yields. Since compound interest earns a slightly higher interest rate than the amount stated, to see the true interest rate being earned on an investment, we need to calculate the equivalent interest rate that would be earned if interest was paid annually. We call this calculation the effective yield. The formula for effective yield is y equals 1 plus r over n to the n minus 1. Um, sometimes you'll see this as APY, um, the annual percentage yield. And it just gives us that different kind of calculation to say what's happening really in the whole year, how much interest am I getting. So let's look at a small example to start. Let's find the effective yield for an investment earning 8.6% interest compounded monthly. Notice in our equation, and we can go back and look at it real quick, our equation y, you don't have to know what p is, you don't know, have to know what t is. You only need to know the interest rate and how often interest is accumulated. So back in our formula, I can put the 0 .086 is my r, compounded monthly is 12, and this time, again, there's nothing else with it, it's just 12. Make sure you're putting the parentheses in, so I have parentheses 1 plus 0 .086 over 12 to the 12, and then separately minus 1. To make sure this minus 1 doesn't affect the 12 and end up being 11, I would hit parentheses 1 plus 0 .086 over 12, parentheses to the 12 equals, and then do minus 1. When you do that, you are going to get a decimal, and it's much longer than this, so I said here approximately, and I gave you five decimal places, so I have 0 .08947. I want to express that as a percent, so it's 8.947%. Definitely you want to give me more decimals than what we started with. I gave you two to start. I want to have much more than two here, because sometimes it could be really close in between. I'll make sure I tell you on the test how many decimal places I want, pay attention to the homework to see what it asks for. So let's use this to be able to compare um, two investments to see which one's better. So let's say we have these two choices. A is 9.5% compounded semi-annually, and B is 9.4% compounded monthly. We will use the effective yield to figure out which investment is better. So let's start with option A. Option A is 9.5%. 0.5% compounded semi-annually. So I'm going to put this into my equation for y. I have 1 plus 0 0.095 over 2. That quantity is squared, and then I'll subtract 1. I put that in my calculator. I got about 0 0.09726, so that's 9.726% interest. Option B was 9.4%, but this time compounded monthly. So again, using my same y, I have 1 plus 0 0.094 over 12 to the 12 minus 1. This gave me about 0 0.09816 or 9.816%. You can see by comparing when you're earning interest, you want the higher percentage, so option B is better. There's one more type of compounding that we need to talk about, which is continuous. So continuous compounding occurs when interest is added every second of every minute of every day of every year. This might sound impossible, but in nature, populations grow continuously, items decay continuously, things depreciate continuously, so there are a lot of examples of things that would work that way. May or may not be money, but we're still going to use it just so we can compare how these things work. So if we're going to compute continuous compounding, we need one more formula and it's A equals PE to the RT. So A is still our future amount, P is still our present amount, R is still our interest rate, T is still time. But what's new is this E. You should have a button on your calculator that has E to the X, 
and just for curiosity if you wanted to know what he is it has a value of about 2.71828 it goes on forever your calculator knows this number it holds this number in place so when you hit it on your calculator it's going to put that number in for you you don't have to worry about it so let's try this which one is better option a $9,500 invested at 3% compounded monthly for two years or option B, 9,500 invested at 2.95% compounded continuously for two years. So both times I have $9,500, both times I have two years, the difference here is the interest rate and how often it's compounded. So just like before, I'm gonna break it into two and look at my options. This time, instead of doing effective yield, I'm just gonna see how much money do I have in the future. So with option A, I have my $9,500. It's earning 3% interest compounded monthly, which is 12. So I have 9,500 times parentheses 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12. And my um, exponent is 12 times 2. So the monthly for two years gave me $10,086.69. In option B, we're using our A equals PE to the RT formula. So I have $9,500. I have E. And then to the power of 0 0.0295 times 2. This gave me $10,077.36. It's important to note when you hit that E button in your calculator, it should come up with a parenthesis. If it doesn't come up with a parenthesis, then you want to put the 0 0.0295 times 2 in parentheses or multiply that out before you use the formula. Just like before, we want to compare these two numbers and see which one is better. Again, bigger number means better investment, so I can see the 10,086 is more than 10,077, so in this case, option A was better.